Mother, are Post 40% Bran Flakes really the best tasting cereal of them all? Well, your father says so, and father knows best. <laughs> Yes, it's Father Knows Best, transcribed in Hollywood, starring Robert Young as Father. A half-hour visit with your neighbors, the Andersons. Brought to you by America's largest selling bran flakes, Post 40% bran flakes. And by Instant Postum, the good-tasting drink that's entirely caffeine-free. I shot an arrow into the air. It fell to earth I know not where. A thing like that can be very, very serious. Especially if that little prankster Cupid is on the sending end of that arrow. And this particular arrow just happened to fall in Springfield, right smack dab in the center of the white frame house on Maple Street. And someone you'd never suspect is wearing the biggest engagement ring you ever saw. Let's find out who, gradually along with the rest of the family. Like this. Kathy, you're hardly eating any dinner. Aren't you hungry? Not too. Daddy, haven't you noticed anything different about me? Like... Anybody want the rest of those sweet potatoes? Okay, then I might as well finish them. Bud! Well, nobody said anything. You didn't give them a chance. I'll pass you the butter, Bud. Here. Well, you don't have to stick your finger in my eye. Cut it out. Didn't you notice anything different? About my left hand, I mean? Yeah, it's clean for a change. <laughs> That's not what I meant. I'm only trying to make you notice something. My finger... I'm sure Kathy's only trying to be polite. Bud, put Betty's dessert down. Huh? Oh, uh, I, I was reaching for the cream, and I guess Betty's dessert was sort of in the way. You see, Margaret, Bud has a slight impediment in his reach. <laughs> Kitten, what are you waving your hand for? I was just... I sincerely hope that if and when Ralph and I are married, conduct will be a little more dignified around this dinner table. And I sincerely hope that if and when you and Ralph are married, Ralph will have a dinner table of his own. <laughs> Father. Betty, are you really engaged to Ralph? When she's not engaged to Glenn Rogers, she is. Bud. Are you really, Betty? I'll bet you haven't got a ring like this one. If it's anybody's business, Ralph feels that we should wait until we are mentally adjusted to each other. Words, words, words. Pass me the cream, please. Bud, you might pay attention to some words, other than please pass what's for dessert and mom, I'm hungry. Ralph believes that before two people make a domestic contract, there should be a complete meeting of the mind. Sure, they ought to have their heads bumped together. <laughs> Mother, a person can't say one intelligent word around this house. All he thinks of is his stomach. You gotta eat so you can think, you think so you can eat, that's life. Pass the cream. <laughs> you want my dessert, bud? I'm not too hungry. You sure you don't want it? Okay, hand it over. There sits a young man of quick decisions. Ow! Oh, Kathy, why do you have to stick your finger in my eye every time you pass something? I've only been trying to lead up to something, but it seems like the only thing people want to talk about is Bud's stomach. Well, Kitten, I'm sorry, really. It seems like everything gravitates toward Bud's stomach. <laughs> Let me see that left hand of yours. Well, look at that sparkler, will you? I'm engaged. Well, isn't anybody going to say anything? In case I get hungry later, are there any cold beans in the icebox? <laughs> <laughs> uh, that looks like quite a ring. Yes, indeed. You're rather young to be getting married. In fact, I uh, hardly know what to say. Bud, have you any comment? Me? This is a pretty momentous occasion, you know. Yeah. Where'd you get that big chunk of glass? <laughs> it's not a chunk of glass. It's a genuine imitation zircon. <laughs> oh, 
Oh, yeah? It's pretty corny, if you ask me. Now, wait. This is Kathy's big moment. May I ask, Kitten, who the fortunate young gentleman is? Sure. It's Paul Bedeker. Bedeker? Kitten, uh, just how long have you known uh, Paul? Oh, just eons and eons. Eons and eons. Well, uh, just what would that amount to in standard time? <laughs> Thirteen days. He just moved here. Thirteen days is an eon? Kathy, I don't seem to recall this particular young man. Particular? He can't be very particular. That will do. <laughs> Bud, if you can't be nice, just don't say anything at all. Yes, and sit down. The family dinner table is not just a place to stuff yourself with food. But I gotta go. If Mrs. Bedeker will excuse me. Bud, sit down. Holy cow. Now, Kitten, I realize that where love is concerned, the solitary beat of a heart can be an eternity. But still, how well can you get to know a man in just 13 days? Well, gee, Daddy, he's got nine freckles on his nose and a gold filling in his tooth. How well can you know a man? <laughs> well, I was thinking more along economic lines. A girl her age? Holy cow. Now, let's all calm down and talk sensibly. Why do we always have to get into an uproar? Where were we? Uh, now, this uh, young man... I'll get it! I'll get it! You pass for me, I'll take it in the day. Probably Hello? for me, probably Joe Phillips. Marvelous invention, the telephone. Look at him move. <laughs> Jim, don't you think you're carrying this too far with Kathy? Why don't you simply tell her she's too young to think of such things and let it go at that? Now, honey, I'm just playing a little game with her. It's all in fun. I know. But you've played these little games with the children before. That didn't always work out so well. Well, the main thing is not to have Kathy ridiculed. This is very serious to her. And I've got to get that over to Betty and Bud. I'm sure they'd forget about it if you would. Why don't Mother, you... Mother, will you please make Kathy get off that phone? I'm expecting a very important call from Ralph. What we need in this house is a switchboard. <laughs> She's just yakking with that Bedeker character. Hey, Dad, will you make Butterhead get off the phone? I'm expecting an important call from Joe Phillips. Don't call Kathy Butterhead. Can't you say something nice about her just once? Okay, so she's lovely. She's engaged. She uses the phone all day. <laughs> Daddy! Mommy! It was him! Paul Ludlow Bedeker. Holy cow. <laughs> He's jealous. He wouldn't know if I've ever been engaged before. I hope you told him the truth, kitten. Oh, Daddy, I just couldn't tell him about Stevie. Oh, brother... Father, I refuse to stay in a house so saturated with inane, but inane discussions. All right, Princess, you can leave. Just as soon as you help Bud stack the dishes. Betty, you aren't just mad because I've got a ring and you haven't, are you? Why don't you turn green? She won't have to wait long. That phony ring is turning her finger green. <laughs> Go apologize to Kathy. Go on now. Right now. Well, heck, Dad, I, I gotta wait for a call from Joe Phillips. We gotta go someplace. You don't leave this house until you find Kathy and apologize to her. Go on. Holy cow. Girls, trouble, trouble, trouble. I'll get it. I'm right here. Hello? Oh, hello, Joe. Where you at? Over at Bert Quimby's? Betty, go see if you can find Kathy. But what if Ralph calls? I can probably persuade him to call again. Go on. Oh, Joe, I can't leave right now. Oh, that crazy sister of mine decided to get married. I hurt her feelings. You see, Margaret? Now I've got to use diplomacy and appeasement. It's like I said, you have to handle these things delicately. How long are you going to be at Bert's? Oh, well, uh, I gotta find her and apologize first. Lucky you haven't got a sister. Okay, so long. Ah, fiddle faddle, girls, trouble, trouble, trouble. All right, Mr. Anthony, what are your plans now? 
What I intend to do now is invite Kathy's little fiance, Paul Ludlow Bedeker, to spend the day with us. Tomorrow, probably. What's the point in that? Well, we'll expose the future groom to our way of life around here. I can't think of any better way to discourage him. <laughs> oh, Jim. Furthermore, if he's a real boy, he'll be hungry all day. Let Kathy cook for him. <laughs> this will be the shortest engagement in history. <laughs> Of all the ridiculous ideas... There's nothing ridiculous about it. You've got to play the game, roll along with it. Besides, let's start early to show our children the pitfalls of hasty marriage. Here she is. I found her. Did Ralph call? No. Well, kitten, come here. Let Daddy wipe those tears away. Daddy? I know, I know. Bud's sorry, too. He's looking for you so he can apologize. Kitten, how would you like to invite Paul Bedeker to spend the day with us tomorrow? Oh, could I? Could I call him now? Hey, I can't find her any... Oh, there you are. Well, go ahead, bud. Okay, shrimp. I'm sorry I said that about the ring. That's all right, bud. I'll get it, I'll get it. Hello? Hello, Ralph? Is that you, Ralph? Who? Bud? Just a minute. Bud, it's for you. I swear that's Ralph. Now, what could he want with Bud? What in the world could... Oh, yeah. Yeah. Sure, I told Joe Phillips my sister was getting married. She's got a ring and... Hello? Hey, Ralph, wait. <laughs> He said goodbye forever. <laughs> I tried to tell him it was Kathy, but he... Oh, this is the end, the absolute end. Now what? Well, when I told Joe, I didn't say which sister was getting married. Please, please, I've got to speak to him. And I guess he thought it was Betty. Please, oh, please, let me... So Joe told Bert Quimby's sister, and she called Ralph to congratulate him. Oh, fine. Well, we can... He won't talk to me. He's gone. Now, Betty, it's not so... Gone good. forever. Well, Jim, dear, I'm glad you enjoy a little game. It looks like you're going to play a double header. Uh oh, it looks like Father has really put his foot in it this time. Well, if he only had all his facts straight, he might have made a smarter decision. Yes, having all the information is always important. For example, when it comes to breakfast, you've probably been hearing about bran and the important keep regular benefits of bran for years. And maybe you've actually tried it. Only you weren't quite satisfied with the flavor. If that's the case, I have some good news. Yes, the fact is, something wonderful has happened to bran. That's right. The Post people have created a wonderful new flavor for their Post 40% bran flakes. They call it Magic oven flavor. And after trying it, I've had friends say they like new Post brand flakes better than any other cereal. And that's important because now your ounce of prevention, Post brand flakes, gives you the important keep regular benefits of brand in a cereal you'll really enjoy day after day. Now, Mother, I hope all this helps you solve the problem of what cereal to serve your family. Start serving them new Post brand flakes. Eat them for flavor. Eat them for health. You win both ways. So when you do your marketing this weekend, remember. For goodness sake, eat post brand flakes. So good and so good for you. Yes, ask your grocer for America's largest selling brand flakes, post 40% brand flakes. So good. And so good for you. It's 
rather frightening when you think what a furor a little ten-cent ring can cause. As far as the future Mr. and Mrs. Paul Ludlow Bedeker are concerned, things are working out fine. But on the other hand, love has dealt Betty Anderson a cruel blow. At any rate, on this new day in the Anderson home, things are moving along like this. Jim? Where are you, Jim? I'm in the den. Oh, hiding out. Margaret, I am not hiding out. Well, you should be. You and your plan. I thought that little boy was supposed to get sick of Kathy's cooking. Just give him time. He can't stand much of it. Can't stand much of it? He's working on his seventh hamburger in four hours. Oh. Well, maybe you'd better send Kathy in here for a moment. I can't. He's just sent her to the store for more hamburger. <laughs> Got her trained already, huh? Well, don't worry. Jim, I'm not worried about Kathy. It's Betty I'm worried about. She's desperate. Ralph has just disappeared from the face of the earth. Smart boy. <laughs> I mean, he's just letting Betty stew a little. She's called all the hospitals. They hate her at the Missing Persons Bureau. Now she wants to drag the lake. <laughs> well, it's okay with me, just as long as she doesn't drag it in here. <laughs> oh, stop being silly. I'm sorry, honey, but Betty's problem isn't my fault. If you will refresh your memory... I know, dear, but you insisted on going along with Kathy's whim. The least you can do is humor Betty a little, too. Will you at least sympathize with her? Of course I will. I didn't realize she was taking it so seriously. Where is she now? She's on the phone. She's practically got the whole town looking for Ralph. Right now she's talking to Glenn Rogers. Oh, oh. oh she didn't call him. Glenn called her. He's offered to drive around to look for Ralph. Mother? Yes, Betty? Could you come here a minute? Yes, dear. Jim, please try to do something. Mother? Yes, dear, I'm coming. Will you, dear? Sure, sure. And uh, send little Paul in here, will you? I haven't even had a talk with my prospective son-in-law yet. And it's about time, I think. Hey, Dad, Dad. Hi, Mom. Where's Dad at? Hey, Dad, where are you at? I'm at the den. <laughs> oh, hey, Dad. I'm here, I'm here. Where have you been at? <laughs> Joe and I have been trying to find out where Ralph is. We went everywhere. He wasn't there. <laughs> that young man is really lost. <laughs> yeah. Hey, Dad, did you hear about Glenn Rogers? Did I hear what about Glenn Rogers? His cousin is here. No kidding. <laughs> He's got one of those little English cars. It's keen. Say, I just got an idea. If your idea has anything to do with buying one of those overgrown scooters, the answer is no. But gee, Dad... And excuse me, Jim, but Master Paul Ludlow Bedeker sends his compliments, and will you please step into the kitchen? Sure, sure. Wait a minute. I thought <laughs> I asked him to come to me. He's busy cooking waffles. Waffles? Mm -hmm. He wants everything ready so when Kathy comes back with more hamburger, they won't lose any time making waffle burgers. Oh, now, wait a minute. Now, dear, you have to go along with them, remember? Now run along. I'll stay here and call Ralph's mother again. Maybe she's heard something. I'll come with you, Dad. Waffle burgers, huh? Never mind, bud. I want to talk to this young fellow alone. Oh, I thought maybe if there was an extra waffle burger or two... Just or... stay away from the kitchen. Oh, you don't mind if I just stand outside the door and smell them, do you? I don't care where you stand, just don't come in here. Well, Paul, my boy? Hi. <laughs> How are you getting along? Okay. Well, I thought by this time you'd be a little tired of Kathy's cooking. <laughs> she doesn't fry the best hamburger in the world, you know. I know, but I showed her how. Oh. Oh. As a matter of fact, Paul, I uh, wanted to have a little serious talk with you. Okay. Sit down. Well, thank you. <laughs> Paul, let's see, uh, you're nine years old, I believe. Oh, no. Nine and a half. Oh, I thought you looked a lot older than nine. <laughs> I'm sorry. That's okay. 
Paul, you're uh, pretty sold on marriage, are you? Yeah, sure. I uh, suppose you realize this marriage business takes money. What do you intend to do about money matters? We figure we can live on the allowance I'm going to get. 75 cents a week. Hmm, 75 cents. Then there's Kathy's allowance of 50 cents. I was figuring that in the 75. <laughs> oh, I see. Well, uh, remember now, I'm not trying to discourage this marriage, but uh, do you realize that house rent alone can sometimes cost over 75 cents a week? Oh, that's taken care of, Mr. Anderson. Good, good. We're going to live here. <laughs> well, that clears that up. Uh, just another little thing, Paul, my boy. Uh, the wedding alone is going to cost a considerable amount. Flowers, uh, church, and all that. We're going to elope. Girls like to be romantic. I know, I know. But uh, do you think you can find a minister to marry you? You're supposed to be at least uh, 12, you know. We're just going to jump over a broomstick. How is that again? <laughs> well, my grandmother says that all two people have to do is jump over a broomstick, and they're married. Well, now, that's a new one. <laughs> my grandmother knows everything. She says if you bury the left hind leg of a tree frog in a red anthill on the night of your wedding, you'll never fight. Your grandmother said that? Yes, sir. Your grandmother must be a very remarkable woman. All our family is. I can see that. <laughs> oh, hi, Daddy. I got the hamburger, Paul. Okay. There's the waffles. Get busy. Now, uh, hold on a minute, kids. Uh, I think this oh, is... Oh, Jim, come here. All right, all right. I'm coming. Jim, Betty's in the den, and you've got to talk to her. She's in an absolute daze. What's the matter with you? Margaret, those kids out there in the kitchen, this is ridiculous. Oh, just let them alone. They'll get over it, like you said. Now, please talk to Betty. I don't know. These things can't happen to other people. Betty, are you in there? Yes, Father. Princess, I'm sure everything will be all right. Ralph is just... Well, I'm sure he... I mean, young men are like that, Betty. He probably thought... It's all right, Father. You've all done your best. Hey, Dad, Dad, those kids won't give me any of their waffle burgers. Not even a taste. Bud Anderson, all you can think of is food. And he, he might be at the bottom of the lake. He who? Ralph. You'd think they could at least give me a taste. <laughs> Bud, get out of here. Holy cow. Now, Betty. Mm. Hello? Just a moment. It's for you, Betty. Hello. Oh? Well, I suppose it's my duty, really. All right, then. I'm going out for a little while. Are you going out to look for Ralph? Well, yes. Don't worry about me. I am worried about her, though, Margaret. I know there's nothing wrong with Ralph, but... Just the same, she can work herself into a terrible state. I wouldn't worry too much, Jim. Daddy, Mommy, we're leaving. Wish us luck. Now, hold on, kitten. You're not going out and jump over a broomstick. <laughs> uh, get married, I mean. Married? Oh, no. Are we, Paul? Nah. We're going to pack our waffle burgers and go out and look for buried treasure. We want to get a lot of money before we get married. And Paul's grandmother says if you take three hairs from a yellow cat's tail and put them on a pointed oak stick, it will lead you to buried treasure at sundown. My grandmother knows everything. All hail to your grandmother. <laughs> Don't be too long. Oh, we won't. Come on, Paul. <laughs> well, there's one problem solved, Jim. <sighs> yes. Now if I could only get Betty straightened out. Hello. Yes. Ralph! Ralph! Well, bless you, boy. Uh, just a minute, I'll call Betty. Betty, have you gone? Betty! Don't get so excited, Jim. Betty! Betty! Yes, Father? What on earth? It's Ralph. He's on the phone. Oh. Well, I don't care to talk to him right now. <laughs> it's Ralph. He's on... What? What did you say? Father, Glenn Rogers' cousin was kind enough to lend Glenn his little English car to help me look for Ralph. 
I just can't let Glenn down now after all the trouble he's gone through to help me. But, Betty, you don't have to look for Ralph. He's not lost anymore. He's on the phone. Father, it's the principle of the thing. <laughs> Glenn's cousin has done Glenn and me a great favor. To let him down now would definitely brand me as a traitor. Excuse me, Father. Glenn's on his way over. <sighs> Margaret. Yes, dear? This has been a very trying day. Do you suppose the kids left any of those waffle burgers? <laughs> And now, before our final surprise of the show, here are the Andersons, quietly gathered in the kitchen for a little snack. More waffle burgers, Jim? Uh, no thanks, Margaret. But I will have some more postum. Gee whiz, Daddy, that's your third cup. Listen, Kathy, it wouldn't matter if it were my sixth cup. Postum can't hurt you. No caffeine, no coffee nerves. Remember? Jim's right, friends. Instant postum contains no caffeine. Nothing to cause you sleepless nights or upset your nerves. Of course, many people aren't bothered by caffeine. But if you are, if caffeine causes you sleepless nights or jittery nerves, switch to Postum. Switch to Instant Postum and sleep. Postum is the swell-tasting, completely safe drink for the whole family. Get Instant Postum tomorrow. <laughs> It's been a rugged 24 hours for Jim Anderson, with two daughters in a romantic uproar at the same time. But thanks to Jim's understanding and applied psychology, things are back to normal again. Of course, Jim isn't entirely satisfied that there won't be a recurrence of some of the symptoms. Like this. Margaret, I refuse to worry about Betty's triangular romance anymore. But I wonder if this thing with Kathy is settled. I'd forget it, Jim. Well, they didn't find any treasure. I just hope that they don't decide to get married without it. Kathy! So what if they do? Just go along with it, dear, and nothing will happen. That's not what worries me. It cost me about $5 for a hamburger. The way he cooks. Did you call me Daddy? Yes, kitten. Ah, still engaged to Paul, are you? No, not anymore. What happened? Don't you like his looks all of a sudden? Oh, no, it isn't that. He's a fine, strong personality. Oh, yes, I know. Well, now, if it isn't his looks or his personality, what can it be? Well, to tell you the truth, Daddy, I can't stand his cooking. Join us again next week when we'll be back with Father Knows Best, starring Robert Young as Jim Anderson. Until then, good night and good luck from the makers of Post 40% Brand Flakes, America's largest selling brand flakes, and Instant Postum, the drink that's entirely caffeine-free. In our cast were Rhoda Williams as Betty, Gene Vanderpile, Ted Donaldson, Norma Jean Nilsson, and Michael Chapin. Ladies, for a happy family at the start of each day, start serving breakfast the post tens way. It's the handy, thrifty way to let everybody choose his own favorite cereal. Post Tens brings you ten individual packages of seven famous Post cereals. Raisin Bran, 40% Bran Flakes, Post Toasties, Grape Nuts, and Grape Nuts Flakes. And Post Tens is the only assortment with two leading sweet-coated cereals. Popular new Crinkles and delicious candy-coated Sugar Crisp. Try this popular assortment of famous Post cereals. Get Post Tens today. <laughs> Father Knows Best was transcribed in Hollywood and written by Paul West and Carl Hertzinger. This is Bill Foreman speaking. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company.